We're going to play a game. I ain't really trying to play no games. Hey. You already know my name. Name. Ricky Ziggy and it ain't no shame. No shame. I fell off. There are sweat glands in your scalp. Do you also sweat in your scalp? You sweat a lot. Okay. All right. All over your body? I mean, not all over. Well, if you start from the head, it goes down. (laughs) Is this why the layer of choice is simply a scarf? Uh, To catch all the sweat? No, No. is it just like, okay, because you get warm, you just wear a scarf just in case you cool off a bit and you need a layer. I'm just trying to look cute for the interview. You know what I'm saying? Just a little accessory. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) That's that's all. (laughs) We like accessories. You look yeah. nice. Thank you. You too. You guys too. Too. Thank you for being an accessory on the show today. I'm happy to be an accessory on the show. Uh, it was uh, on video uh, and podcast. We got squad. We lit. Gang, Listen, gang. we are out here. We're on MG. Holla. It's incredible to have you. Mm-hmm. Who do we have the pleasure of having in the studio today? My name is Max Gibson. Mm-hmm. Okay. Max Murphy Gibson. Uh... Mother's last name, father's last name, Max Murphy Gibson. Oh. Uh, and I'm happy to be here. You got both last names. Both last names. Two Wait. last names. Oh, so those are your two last names? Not, Murphy's not your middle name. It is. Murphy's my little name, but it's my mother's last name. Oh, good. Mm-hmm. So you have a strong mom. She's like, nah, nah, we gonna hold on to that. Yeah. Definitely Okay. That. Okay. Shout out moms. Shout out oh, moms. moms. We, yeah, we can start there. Aw. Shout out moms. Love mom. Yeah. Absolutely. Mother's Day is coming up kind of soon, guys. Mother's Day is May 13th. Plan ahead. Have something nice. Right. What you planning? Yeah, what are you going to do for your mom? I'm planning the plan right now. <laughs> <laughs> you said that I just planted the seed right now. Think about it. I'm thinking about it now. Start it's getting to, to the point where I'm like, all right, it's time to actually start celebrating my mom. Before I was just like, mom, you know I love you, right? <laughs> True. Now she's like, mm, you get paid. <laughs> this get- is you always though. She's like, last year she's like, I, I, this is the last year I'm not buying any of my friends Christmas gifts. Yeah, it was. A really I feel that. Though. It got to a point. It was just like. I feel that though. Well, now my friends are an investment. Like now my friends absolutely wholeheartedly are investing in my development and growth, and there are only so many of them. So it, it's like at this point, you need to show them that you care in mm-hmm. in some way. And gifts are not important to me, so I often forget. But gifts. People really like them. Mm. It's a top five love language. Mm. Ooh, do you I also know? found that giving gifts on non-holiday days goes really far too. Farther. Like, goes farther. farther. Okay, boom. Farther. You know, if it's a random ass Tuesday and it's like, yo, Frida, I was just thinking about you. I saw this gift and I need to give it to you. That's so much better than being forced to be like, oh shit, like it's Christmas. Let me just do that. give you this Amazon gift card. What was the last gift you got? unexpectedly that really made your like ma- made you really happy man Who gave um, it to a you? really good friend of mine bought me a fiddle leaf plant Ooh. out of nowhere What's that? I've never heard um of it. it's a really beautiful plant it's about well it's not like this but it's like it was it's like yay big okay and it has these big big green leaves kind of like uh clubs like a flintstone oh uh, i know what you're talking about yeah i've seen those recently in a lot of established a lot of businesses have those kind of plants yeah, i think yeah, yeah and they that. yeah I know good for the home mm. and mm. so yeah she just popped up with it one day and i was like my heart this gift yeah. i just called to say i, I love, love you, you. That's, yeah that's the, that's a hit yeah. i'm the worst at receiving gifts i feel like on holidays I hate, I hate, I hate, because for me, it's like, okay, people come on Christmas, your family members, and they buy you these gifts, and then there's this expectation that you want it or need it, and then you have to want it or need it, because you have to take it home with you, and and accept it with a gracious heart. You know, like, thank you, you thought of me. I hate, I, I, I I'm like, that. rather, I rather just, you didn't have to give me a gift. I just tell I them, I, I think you missed the mark on this one, <laughs> and then I say, did you keep the receipt? You say it just like that? Yeah, I said that to my grandma last year because she definitely... My grandma goes to the church and she goes to the donation area and picks things up. <laughs> and okay. then she brings them to me. Re-gifts a gift. She re-gifts donation gifts to her grandchildren. This just tells you a little bit about my grandma and where she is economically. And so... Um, yeah, it's the counts, though. I, I, is it? I think so. <laughs> what did you think about? Did you think about me? Well, you think within your means. 
I don't know. I'm not a fan. Okay. I wasn't a fan. She knows. <laughs> it's like, what were you thinking? Okay. What was the thought here? And also for me on birthdays, like I hate all of the kind text messages. Like I'm like, there's some times when I really need a kind pick me up and mm. I would rather read this on a day that I need that pick me up than mm. like HBD. And then I'm like, oh my yeah, God, thank HBD. you. I, I don't, I, uh, mm. anyone who texts you HBD or puts it on your Facebook Gets page no response. doesn't care about you. Just doing it for obligation. HBD? You can't even spell it out? It's a weird thing, right? Yeah. It's like on your birthday, sometimes you hear from people that you haven't heard from in years, but then like the homies that you see every day, you might even hear from on your birthday. And yeah. It's like, okay. Do you take it? How do you take it? I don't know. So, anyway. Gifts, everybody. Gift I giving's tight, though. Max. You are simply a gift to the world. Thank you. That's, you're a gift. You're a gift. I'll take you're that. a gift. On video? Ooh, you see you're a video? gift. Hey. How are you sharing your gift with the world? Mm. Mm. I think I, I mean, I'm not, you know, I think we all have many gifts. Okay. Mm. I think we all have many gifts. So I think realizing what they are, um, acknowledging them, and then and then sharing them is, is, is part of the process. But I think mm, for me... You know, Jenna, that you brought this up. Thinking about myself and my own gifts, I have a lot of joy within me. Before I even see anybody in the morning, mm -hmm. before I wake up, I'm already joyous within yeah. myself. Yeah. And so that's uh, in large part due to my parents and um, you know the positive relationships I have in my life. But I would usually wake up with that. And yeah. so as far as sharing gifts, a lot of times it's just it's just bringing that joy to other people. You know what I mean? And yeah. so being juiced to be there. Um, I read this quote the other day that was so real. And it was some on the lines of like, if you show up someplace and you're happy to be there, the other people around you will get that energy and it'll bring them up as well. And so I can't say that all the time I'm used to be everywhere I'm at, but a lot of times I am. Like, I'm used to be here. Yeah. So, you know, you can walk, I can walk with that um, level of joy sometimes too. You feel like that's one of your gifts? Oh, yeah, for sure. Mm. No, I think we're definitely happy to, hear, happy to have you here. Thank you. I think that's absolutely true. You are, uh, you can positively impact the space that you're in based mm. off of your own energy. Because people, people are on frequencies. And so if you, have a, if you have a positive frequency, people will pick that up and want to tune into that. People are on frequencies. Yes. Yeah. People want to yes. frequent your frequency if it's good. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. They do. They do. And I think they it's- want to frequent your frequency. Frequent like your frequency. Yes. They really do. Yeah. And I, I like think that. it's also like setting the stage, like the power to set the tone for something, right? Mm. Like making the decision to be joyful mm. means that you've made the decision almost to not necessarily take control of the situation, but because you come into it joyful, you have the power to just change the entire situation mm. just based off of who you're showing up as. Very and I so. think that's something I have to remind myself is like, I'm a powerful person. I can impact the people around me. If I'm negative... I, I bring it to everybody. My mom used to tell me the whole house, the whole house could be negative when you're down, you know? Very true. Um, Very so yeah, true. Yeah. Very true. I've sensed that in my life as well. Yeah. Stepping into that power. Mm -hmm. sure. What about you guys? How do you share your gifts with the world? Mm. Mm. I think the gift that I'm realizing most potent and powerful and influential to other people is uh, confidence. Mm, let them know. Mm. Yeah. Come on mm. with a jig. Yeah, I mean, you have to be. I think I'm so. I think I'm so confident and, and able to communicate who I am strongly. Mm -hmm. It allows for other people to make an informed decision of how they want to engage with me. Mm. Right. So it's like, oh, I, you know, sometimes people are like, oh, I don't know why they said this to me or said did this to me. I'm like, people don't, people don't really do or say things that. Uh don't match my frequency. I think people are a lot of times are able to make an informed decision of like, okay, this is how she moves. This is, these are the things mm. that she likes to do. Um, and then I think it allows them to be like, what do I like to do? What, what, how, how do I want to engage with this person? How do I want to get to know this person and things like that? So I think just leaning in your own truths is really important for how you impact other people. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah very much so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I you, JP? think the way that I share my gift or how I share myself. I think that I've been wanting it more to align with, with humility. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, and being humble in situations. So even if I'm sharing my perspective or I'm sharing my, you know, my expertise or I'm sharing what I've gone through, it's coming from a humble place to like, hopefully it impacts you in a positive way. You know, hopefully Mm -hmm. it inspires you or motivates you to like get up and go do the thing. Mm -hmm. You know, Um, I remember my mom always used to tell me to be more humble. And I feel like that's a word that we all struggle with is humility, Mm -hmm. you know, like reveling in your successes, but also knowing that there's more to come and you don't know it all and you haven't had it all yet. Uh, So trying to stay balanced um, and also not trying to just over advise people like you can share with people and and advise them, but you can share with people and, and just say, I'm just sharing. You know, this is just me being vulnerable. This is me just humbling myself. And so that's how I'm choosing to share my gifts as of late is coming from a place of humility mm-hmm. and knowing when I'm wrong, too, which is so hard. Confidence, humility. <laughs> Two, joy, joy, joy. I mean, yeah, all all vital, vital characteristics. I feel like sure, um, major life skills. I feel like the the concept of humility is is such a a challenging. Well, actually, the balance of like humility and, and confidence, and then that that and then you know falling into cockiness potentially. Mm. But mm-hmm. that balance of humility and, and confidence, I really struggle with, especially being in Oakland. Are you guys from Oakland or the Bay? We're from the Bay Area. Okay, boom. Yeah. So I don't know. You're if, from the Bay Area. I'm from Oakland. Yeah. Okay, so, rep your set. Yeah. So I don't know if this goes for folks all over the Bay. This is a conversation I had with a woman that wasn't from Oakland, but has been in Oakland for like the past 10 years or something. Yeah. And she said this. She said, you know, the thing I've realized that's so sad but true about people from Oakland is that they have all this talent, all this worth, but they don't know their own worth. Mm. And... She told me that and it floored me because it's so true. It's like, I feel like in Oakland, in the Bay Area, there's so many superstars, there's so many gems, there's so many people that were born here, raised here, and you put them in any other environment, anywhere in the world, and they shine. Mm -hmm. But then you are in Oakland and you ask them about the work they're doing and they have some amazing accomplishment. They do something great and you talk to them about it. You know what they say? Oh, well, you know, I'm just trying to do my thing. You know what I mean? That's just you know, nothing. You know, I'm just trying out here. You know it ain't I mean? no thing. I'm just trying to get it, man. Right. You know, I'm just trying. And it's like. The Bay is hella, no, the bay is it's hella like, chill to a fault. It's hella, it's too chill. People mm. are too content to a fault mm. here. And I think that's a real, real thing. And it's like, you know, I think the other side of that is like people in the Bay, we 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 embody that level of, of confidence and humility, I feel like, but that humility rises up a little bit too much. Yeah. I think like people from Oakland especially, like you never want to be out here shining too much. Right. Like, uh, like right. that's not that's not that's not that's, that's not right. how people move. And out I here. think it's because probably people saw that. It, it just that's the exact movement. People have seen that in, in, in people previously and so mm-hmm. now they stray away from that. Mm-hmm. You know, they stray away from that. But I, as a person who has traveled extensively, I would say, yeah, like the talent that is here is 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 supremely over underwritten. You know, mm-hmm. it, it it it's people. Shayla from So Oakland was just saying when people when you say you're from California, people think you're from LA. You know, they don't think mm. you're from Oakland. They don't think you're from the Bay Area. Right, right, right. Um, and so also you always have to overcompensate and say, no, I'm from the Bay Area. Outside of San Francisco, there's this city called Oakland, and I live there. That's where I do my work. I mean, right. Berkeley, Richmond, Vallejo, all of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And all of it. And yeah. I think that's another thing that's important for this show as well. A lot of the people that we're bringing on this season are from the Bay mm-hmm. and uh, and are doing dope shit. Yeah. And, and of course, the show will expand to more people who are domestic mm-hmm. and international as well. But um, what are we doing as the new generation of people from the Bay Area who are doing incredible things to showcase each other's work, to showcase our own work, mm-hmm. right? And to build here. Because that's also something that Shayla said. They're like, oh, okay, well, if you really want to make it big, people tell me that all the time with stand-up comedy. If you really want to make it big, you would go to LA. It's like, or right, right, right. or I could bring these people here. Or mm-hmm. I can make this a powerhouse. Or I can make this the next big thing, right? right. And so it's just so... Uh, it, but in the same vein, right, if you do that, then we talk about gentrification and like... There are just also just so many more people here who are also doing cool things. You're like, but you're not from the Bay, yeah. which is fine. Um, but it just, and then you can saturate the market. If you're too hyped up, right? If you're if you're overconfident, if you let everyone know how dope you are, then everybody's gonna come here and then it'll all be different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's a tricky slope. Yeah, mm-hmm. slippery slope for sure. 
Um, well, that brings me to my first question for you. <laughs> yeah. um, my first question is just around the work that you've been doing in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. So you, as you said, you're from here. You've mm -hmm. been leading wine and bow ties for eight years or so now. Mm -hmm. Can you just tell us a little bit more nine about years. like nine years? Nine years. Nine, nine years. years and some sprinkles. Go yeah. ahead, check me. Nine years nine in the years. sprinkle. Yeah, yeah almost, almost a decade. Yes. That's gonna, incredible. It's going to be a decade, it's January amazing. 1st, 2019. It will be 2019. a decade on this journey, yeah. Can you share with us what that journey has been like? Is what you Ooh. conceived in the beginning, is it still what it is today? Yes and no, Jenna. Yes okay. and no. You know, I'm I'm all I'm always thinking about it and it's um you know, I tell myself sometimes if I knew how hard this, this was, shit was. Yeah. in the first I would have never started. Yeah. I would have never started. Yeah. Right. But with in the journey, one of the things you know, I learned is that for one, the journey is the destination. So the mm. process of manifesting this thing that I've dreamt of for so long, the process of doing it, the people that you meet, the work, the challenges, all of that is the is the juice, is the juicy, juicy nectar, you know what I mean, of this journey for me. Um, and so uh, those are two lessons there. Um, and what was the question again? It was just on, and my question was essentially, what was what you conceived almost 10 years ago? Is that what it oh, is today? So yeah, I mean, hmm. so then like, yes and no, you know what I mean? Like when I first dreamt up wine and bow ties, I think I had like hype beast in mind with like, you know, mm -hmm. my own flavor. Mm -hmm. Right. It okay. was like high snob with my own flavor. Mm -hmm. And as time went on, we, you know, we always kind of had that vision in our mind. But to be honest with you, um, no, my vision has changed over the years. Right. And it's really been informed by um, other people and especially the rest of my team. Mm -hmm. You know, my man, Will, uh, the dude that I've been doing this with for the longest. Your co-founder. Yeah. yeah. He, his vision has, has um, been matched with mine. And we've been able to elevate each other um, and bring each other to, to heights that... I didn't even I couldn't even imagine when I first started, and Can that's you, it that's started the truth. as a blog. Started as a little bitch ass blog spot, <laughs> like some shit was like. Why well, gotta it be was, bitch ass though? Because it was hella skinny like this. Okay. Like the pictures were this big, the paragraphs were this short, and, you were and doing, I was just talking you, about like Drake videos, and you were doing and, the like, writing for that, and though. I was doing all the writing. Yes. And I loved it, yeah. but it was just like wine and bowties on blogspot .com, and there was like no followers. Okay, yeah. There was a little like square in the top right corner that showed how many people would follow you mm -hmm. and for like months it was zero and then i remember their little profile graphic would show up if on the homepage if they followed your site and i remember just so i was so juiced off of getting followers on blogspot mm -hmm. and looking at that and seeing that go from like four to six and six to eight mm -hmm. and eight to ten and then eventually you know i kept on doing it and it got to, um, you know, like 100 or something. I was like, hey. We out here. We out here. We out here. Waves. And, you know, Will Will came in a couple months into that process and was like, yeah. You know, he'd always throw me music. He's huge into music. He has mm. a, a crazy music mind. Mm. Um, Is he a musician? Yeah, he makes music on low key. Yeah, okay. you know. Um, so he would just hit me with music and he'd be like, hey man, put this song up. Why don't you put this song up? I'd be like, oh cool, you know, and I'd write about it. Right. And then eventually it got to the point where he would hit me with these songs and eventually I was like, yo man, why don't you, you got it, why don't you write it? Right. So then we started taking turns blogging on this little blog spot. Little bitch ass blog and, spot. Little bitch ass blog spot. Right. And, and it grew like that and we just kind of fell in love with the process. But I think, you know, there's one really major inflection point in the journey that I have to, to highlight, which is really like the, the evolution of feels. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we had been throwing parties, art shows, screenings, really dabbling with all these different types of experiences. And it was really my man, Will, who put uh, a lot of belief into building out concert experiences mm -hmm. for wine and bow ties and, and what we were doing. I remember arguing with them so much about, you know, paying to book a, you know, popular artist and being like, man, we don't need that, man. What are you talking about, dude? We could just get boop, 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 boop. <laughs> he's like, nah, man, we need this person because this right. person's going to bring it to the next level. Yeah. And I remember like really, you know, going back and forth on that. What was the pushback there? 
I mean, I know you thought you could just have Sideshow Bob and everybody else on the, on well, the headline. Well, it wasn't Sideshow Bob, Frida, you know what I mean? I, we had It might DJs. have been some of the homies we, from around the bend. It was dope homie DJs. She said Sideshow Side Bob. Sideshow right. Bob also was very important stop, in Simpsons. Stop, stop, stop. That's it. Stop. Sideshow side and Bob. Bob. <laughs> Don't so make gross. it sound good. <laughs> it's not side good if it's a hey, Sideshow so, yo, and a Bob. Oh, yeah. No, you don't want Sideshow Bob. So I was just like that. You know, booking that artist isn't cost effective. Okay. Yeah. No. Um. You know, our margins are cool right now. Booking three DJs for the low, but we, you know, we drop extra bread for this one art. It's going to be a lot. And so, um, there was, you know, there was that conversation, and he really helped me understand the value of what leveling up look like. And so, um, it was it was his vision and our other homies Jesse's vision, who's um also just a mastermind when it comes to. Uh, festival experiences he threw mm. festivals at UCLA and then he also threw um, did a lot of experiential work and sponsorships with South by Southwest cool. and so uh, him and Will have been friends for the longest I knew him through since college and stuff too mm. and so the three of us kind of got together once we got to the third or second second or third fields and it was like Will and I do, going at it for a while and like putting these things together and when we were putting together the first couple of fields, the shit was so fucking hard. Like, we just didn't know what we were doing all the way. And, like, we had some experience, but not all of it. Yeah. And so it was really challenging to get those first two off the ground. So then Jesse came in, I think around the second or third one, and was like, kind of like, look, guys, so this is, this this is, is how, how you do this. This is how you do And he just brought so much operational knowledge so to the festival experience. Was this before or after the fields at American Steel? I think that this was, was before. This was, this was the one. Because the one at American Steel. Yeah, was so good that was that it was, was incredible that was like mm, mm, mm. yeah it was and tasty yeah it, it was really was tasty and I, yeah I, yeah jesse was on that one so um has the vision changed yeah you know honestly mm -hmm. I, I remember thinking we were going to get to like big festivals i remember imagining what a festival would look like and i remember thinking it was going to be something at like woodminster theater up in the hills mm -hmm. and like having this foggy like con multi-concert thing and then, lo and behold, you know, we in 2015, and we're throwing festivals. Yeah. And so, yeah, the vision, the vision That's has definitely changed. And um, I think, you know, speaking back to back to just kind of Will and I's work, it's just sort of like our our visions kind of build on each other. So sure. he'll kind of come to me and be like, "Yo, man, like, what do you think we should do? What about this?" And I'm like, "Yeah, cool, 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 for sure." Like. What if we added this, this, and this? And he'll be like, cool, yeah, for sure. Or vice versa. I'll be like, what if we do this? He'll be like, yeah, that's cool. What if we took out this and added this? And so literally, we just kind of build on each other's ideas. And then we go off and we can execute. Yeah. And then we'll come back together and it will we'll be a cohesive experience most times. But um, definitely the vision of the team has helped sure. influence my vision throughout with, the years. With that lateral structure, it sounds like your team has with Jesse, Will, yourself, and whomever else is on the Wine and Bowties team. Mm -hmm. With working with young people, working with friends and colleagues, what has been something that you've learned um, to en kind of enhance the experience of mm -hmm. working with mm -hmm. those people? Like mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. life skills mm -hmm. have you learned? Because I know Jen and I are often learning how to work mm -hmm. in, a, in a business capacity, right? And setting those boundaries between, right now I'm talking to you as a business <laughs> partner, right now I'm talking to you as your friend. How do you work to establish friendship, maintain friendship, and also give people critical advice on how to best move forward with business practices? Yeah, man. I don't <laughs> I don't know. I only really have experience going in it with my man Will. Okay. And like honestly, I feel like it's just a committed relationship. It's not like a romantic relationship, but it's very much a committed relationship in the sense that like whether, you know, we are talking every day or meeting up every week or not, there there's has to be this common understanding that we're going for the same thing. Yeah. That we're 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 both putting our best foot forward to try to manifest this thing that we both agreed upon we want to create. And so um to our credit, you know, that that desire has still been alive for the past nine years and we haven't um, you know, fully fallen out off of off of any of the work but i think underlying that is just that sense of trust yeah. between two friends you know i mean the friendship is kind of the foundation for the work to happen right mm -hmm. and then um i mean will and i were even trying to do a lot for a while we were we were friends and roommates and business partners wow. for like three four years and that was a lot um i laughs. proposed i moved in with jenna 
She said she didn't think that would be best for her relationship. <laughs> To the no, 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 yeah. no, bitch, you're gonna be emailing me and knocking on my door yeah. asking me yeah. questions. It's a lot, it's a lot to be aligned with, and so, um, that that sense of trust is, is really real. And I think the realest piece for me that I've learned too is, um, in, in trusting your partner, right? Yeah, like, especially with something like wine and bow ties and, and events and you know, curation and all these things that are very subjective, um it's easy to get caught up in like the ego of like what looks best or what you think is best or the right way to decision to make or something like that. Um, but what I found is that over the years, like entrusting the per people that you're working with mm -hmm. to execute their vision, you actually get back double mm -hmm. when you do that. If you, if you relinquish the creative control of a project or how something has to be to another person that you're working with mm -hmm. that you trust, you actually get back double because not only do you get their their effort, but you get their perspective. And what I found is that when you put that trust in them, then they're like, okay, shit, okay. Let me do this work. Let me prove myself. Let me do this work. Let me take and, ownership. And and at minimum you get back double. And I've seen yeah. that with feels. Mm, you know yeah. what I mean? I've seen that with so many um, smaller projects with wine and bow ties. And I've learned that over time because when I first started, it was like, oh, I got to do everything. I got to yeah. be, I got to do every aspect of the show. I got to film it. I got to do the interview. I got to do the photography. Taking I got to do the questions. Mm -hmm. I got to throw the event. I got to find the location. Mm -hmm. I got to network with all the people. I got to build out the editorial team. I have to do all of it. And, you know, all the shit wasn't coming out tight. And so it was, it's, I was really a process for me because I have my own. Sure, you know what right. I mean? I want to be, you that know. Guy. Um, but you can be still and still also empower the rest of your team. And so, so it sounded like you've learned, you know, that it's about you, but it's also not about you. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And involving people in the movement. So exactly. I just want to speak to Bamfa to the event okay. that we were just at the feels release party, right. repping Bamfa here. I got a sticker Boom. from that event. Sticks I up. also have the postcards that were on the wall during that event I mm -hmm. brought home. Um, and one of which I'm going to mail to you. Just to say oh, congratulations okay. and thank you for and That's why I asked for your address to okay. let you know that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it was an incredible experience. And I was watching the Instagram story of that event and I saw that you inv invited the folks from Youth Radio to, yeah, yeah, yeah. to kind of film. So I have a two prong question for you. Yeah. For one, the question is, you know, what what is this entire movement? What is Wine and Bowties, right? Like how is it impacting the community? What impact do you want to have it on the community? And then just a second follow up to the question, well, what we were just talking about is like employing other people, right? Bringing yeah. other people on to do the thing, to do the work. Yeah. How has that process been for you and yeah. in inviting people to the table? Yeah. It's all part of the journey. I mean, I think ultimately, you know, I'm trying to manifest a dream. Mm -hmm. um, you know, jump off the beaten path and create something new. Um, and so, you know, when I think about wine and bow ties broadly, I think about building a, a platform you know, more so than a, a website or like a, an event company. It's like a platform to do all these things. And so, um, you know, really originally it was kind of using the platform to celebrate the creative works of people that we believed in. And so that could be in the Bay, that could be overseas, wherever, but it was really just kind of like a website to showcase like creative works, art, culture, ideas, things like that. Um, as time went on, we, once we had a little bit of a following online, we said, okay, what does it look like to bring this online community together in the real world mm. and start to build a little bit more community there? And that was also a really dynamic experience too. And so we've kind of run with both of those, kind of building out editorial and ideas and, and building out like the digital platform to showcase people's works, but then also harnessing that community in the real world and truly building community around that. And so, um, I think that's still kind of what wine and bow ties is, and it's yeah. like it's dope because there's no ceiling on it. You know what yeah. I mean? Like that's what I love about doing your own thing is like it can go as high or as low as you want it to. Yeah. Whereas like if you're at you know such and such job, it's like <laughs> yeah, this person's per this person right here and this person right here, their perception of your work is gonna dictate if you go up or not. Mm. But I always like the idea of having a project that was just between me and the people. 
Direct, yeah. to, con- direct to consumer. Direct to consumer, idea. Yeah. right. Yeah. The, 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 literally, the people will decide if this should continue. The people decide. Yes. We were at a museum on Tuesday. We were at a I had no Tuesday. reason to be at that museum in Berkeley <laughs> on a Tuesday evening, and I showed up. People you were decided in there. they were progressing. They people subscribe to this community, mm-hmm. and that's why it's so important that you build culture, essentially, what you're doing mm-hmm. with wine and bow ties. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it is so difficult for these corporations to build culture because they mm-hmm. are, they're not culture based, uh, driven, culture. interested. But right. I want you to finish the second part of the question, which is employing, yeah. employing oh, community members. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that must be fun. You know, there's been a lot of sacrifices along the way, but I think one of them is just that. I think that's the cool part about your own pursuit is that you can bring other people into the fold, and I think that's just the central part of it. I used to work at um, this nonprofit called Hack the Hood, so we taught youth how to build websites Dope. for local small businesses. Mm-hmm. And that was a great uh, experience for me, too, because I was able to truly engage with the youth of Oakland Mm -hmm. and, like, see what their hopes, dreams, and ambitions were. And I made a lot of amazing relationships with the youth from that. And so we've had countless youth go through the Hack the Hood program. It's like a six-week boot camp. And then, you know, after it, we're cool. They might finish the program, but then they'll come and work a wine and bow ties event. They'll come work the door. They'll come mm-hmm. do security. They'll come handle tickets. They'll do, you know, photography. They'll work on the website. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they're kind of like mini informal formal internships. They've taken on different uh, natures over the years, but it's a central part of what we're trying to do is, is you know, kind of reach up and, and reach down at the same time. And the youth radio, the youth radio collab on Tuesday was like one of the best yes. examples of that. You saw the little, they did yes. the profiles. You see the profiles? Yes. Oh my God. I saw it all. I was just, did, youth up, radio. did they come up with the idea themselves? Um, the live stream? I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure. We've been trying to work with youth radio for a while and the last feels... We were in communication, but not quite. And so I mem- shout out my man, uh, Sam, a.k.a. Yared. Um, but he, he works at Youth Radio, and mm-hmm. he came through with the, with the young squad, and they just... Yeah. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So awesome. Truth. So awesome. Shout out to Youth Radio. Shout out to Hack the Hood. Yes, yeah. for sure. And shout out to you for doing, as you said, kind of reaching up. Like we'll get into that later, like reaching up, picking really awesome guests, getting a really diverse lineup, and then also reaching down and having mm-hmm. diverse community folks and organizations yeah. involved in the work that you're doing. Yeah. Really incredible to be in those, like at that crossway, to be yeah. at that event and be in the crossway, to hear my friends who I look up to who are incredible photographers saying, I donated my time to take photos at this event. Right, right, right. Love that. I think we should jump into a game. I know you have a game that you want to play. Oh, let's play. We're going to play a game. I ain't really trying to play no games. Hey. You already know my name. Name. Ricky Ziggy and it ain't no shame. No shame. I follow. Game. So before we do the games, we'll always do that. Okay, so cool. Um, So this game is called I'm Calling a Lift. Um, This segment is not sponsored by Lift, but soon come Lift, wherever you are listening, sponsor this shit. So I'm Calling a Lift means... Imagine yourself in a romantic situation, whether that's Netflix and chilling a walk on the beach or just chilling with your booski. Okay? okay. Now you're meeting with this person, maybe for the first or the second time. It's new. It's a it's new, new situation. You're not time. too comfortable with them, but you're not uncomfortable with them. That's okay. why you're sharing space. Okay. And the situation presents itself where you just want to call a lift and get the fuck up out of there. So oh, I'm going to give you some situation where you tell me if you would call a lift and just exit the situation or... If you would instead engage in a conversation and dialogue about what's happening in the room. So, okay. here we are. So, it's like stay or call a lift? Yes. Stay or call a lift. It's basically like, For I'm myself. calling a lift. I'm calling a lift. For some myself. For yourself. <laughs> okay. I'm calling a lift or not. <clears throat> oh, You're man. Netflix and chilling with someone. Everything's romantic. It's wonderful. <laughs> You're both sl- snuggling on the couch. Okay. Yeah. You kick off your shoes. You're comfortable. They kick off their shoes. They're comfortable. They feet stank. It's just wafting up past the mic- the popcorn up into your face. You can't even focus on Naruto, which is on the Netflix right now. You can't even focus. Are you calling a lift? You calling a lift or you stay? This is this is what the second or first. Listen, it's, second let's or first say, makes a difference. First or second make, is going to make a difference say, if I call that lift or not. Let's say it's the second. The second, I would address it. I wouldn't call the lift. What do you do? What do you say to them? I'd be like, man, it's your, your, I think, I think your feet. <laughs> I'm sorry. Be... What were you, what, what was that? 
She would say what? I, I, Pardon? I, think, I said I might. I said I might say your st- feet might be on Stankonia. <laughs> <laughs> I would address it. Stankonia? Yeah. Stankonia. If, if they don't Stankonia, they don't Stankonia. But it's if okay. it's the second date, okay. then there's enough level of... Interest. Well, just like... Rapport. You know, rapport to okay. be able to say that. Whereas if it was the first one, I'd probably just be like, God damn. You know what I mean? So the second <laughs> one, I would address it and be like, damn, is that like... I wouldn't probably say Stankonia. I'd be like, damn, is that you or something? I like, said... It smells a little you funky. smell something tart? <laughs> <laughs> You're an asshole. I might say that. I might. I wouldn't. I wouldn't blame. I wouldn't blame her. If they first. said that, they, but what if they? What if they couldn't smell it? You see what I'm saying? Well, what that's why I would. I would make a statement like, "Do you smell that?" The following <laughs> statement would be, "We took our socks off, and then all of a sudden." This sh- yeah. <laughs> Have you tart. ever had to tell someone about their own personal body odor? Yes. How did you go about that discussion? What was stank on them? <laughs> What was stank on you on him and what did you say? <laughs> Reach back into your memory and bring it out. <laughs> He's like, yeah, <laughs> can't even You know, it, man, I'll keep it lit. <laughs> you know, and this, this was something that made me, this was actually a seismic, this was a, a seismic inflection point again in my life. But I, I, you know, there's been a couple times actually in my life when I've been spending time with women and, you know, uh, their vagina smells terrible. Really? Yeah. And it smells, you know, it just smells like something out Crawled of pocket. Up. It's like it's something like, literally came out the pocket yeah, of there. And it's, it's happened like a couple times. And How do you address happened, that? I was just like, first it happened, happened, I was like, I didn't even know this was a thing. Like, what is, what is, what, what? But um, it made me really appreciate after that, after that experience, those couple of experiences, really, really appreciate like cleanliness and like mm. w- women that take care of like after that. like. Did you I think was, the women who didn't smell fresh were not clean? I wondered. <laughs> so you didn't actually say anything to them? Uh, not in the moment. Okay. That's a sensitive topic. Absolutely. Yeah. I was just clarifying. We can get to this. I mean, finish, finish the next of you your... Were, about, I know you were, expect, you were expecting me to say like... Armpit. No, no, no but I, I feel like I that's a serious thing. Oh, you did? Okay. I knew you were going okay. there. What's well, real? It's it's real. It's a real thing. That's what we should talk about. Like it. Twice to it's me. a real thing. And yeah, it's not, you know, I don't, I'm not going to vilify anybody for that. You know, I mean, you, your personal sports. So I was in South Africa and my friend, he told me that every time a woman comes over, he tells them to just get in the shower first. Right, right, right. <laughs> Shower, shower first. We could take a shower. We, yeah, yeah. You need a shower, but I do think there's something valuable in cleanliness. Like that's always me. But before I do anything sexual, someone's like, "How do you take care of yourself, though?" You know, like when no one's around, like, how do you take care of you? Mm. And I think the way you smell, the way your nails are clipped or not, mm. if they're dirty or not, like those things, they all. Uh. Yeah, anyway, next on the, I'm calling a lift. <sighs> I was engaged in that conversation. I would have been calling a lift for the feet. You don't like feet. That's what we've talked about so, this so many conscious times. Conscious now, man. I'm just like, man. No, I mean you're a human the being. The girls that watch, they're gonna be like, is it me? It might have been. It's uh, never because the thing about it is, if you smell funk, if you are outside of my body and you smell my funk, that means that I probably smell my funk too. Or that's not. That's actually a, that's a misconception. Actually, or not, some though. people actually don't assess their own right. body odor, like. Some, yeah, that's all I'm going to say. Some people right. are so familiar in it exactly. that they don't assess it exactly. and it's not a problem for them. Exactly. And so you actually have to let them know yeah. um, that this odor then jumped on me like a monkey on my back and now it's attached. Yeah, and yeah. So how would you go about letting How would know? I go about letting a woman know her vagina smell bad? Because that's yeah, what we're talking about. That We've gotten there. I actually yeah. had a very difficult situation with... Um, a student of mine that I was that I was advising, and um, yeah, she had bad body odor. Two of the two of these situations happened. I think the biggest thing is assessing the situation first. So you ask questions as like similar to, um, "Hey, what did you do today? Um, how are you?" I'm serious. <laughs> what did you this do? is the thing. This is the thing, right? If she's like, if this person, yeah. male or female, is like, "Yeah, I went to the gym. What did you do today? I was riding my bicycle." I was doing, you know, so they've been exhibiting. Exhibit- you know already. So then you're, you're like, doing okay. something active. I'm so you're sorry, doing, I'm so you right. did something active, okay? It's like, okay. Um, what did I say? The next thing that I said to this person, um, I was like, okay. Did, when was the last time that you freshened up? That's a that's a question to ask someone. When was the last time you freshened up? 
after all of these physical activities. If they tell you that they've been laying in bed all day and they smell like this and go, oh, well, um, and then you go into, I just want to let you know that it's come to my it attention. Be that time. It's come to my attention that <laughs> it's come you are come to my attention. This. This. this is nice in theory. These are things I've said. This is in practice. Jenna knows right. I say things. Listen. Jenna knows I say things to listen. people. Listen. They'll find out. Okay. okay. Nonetheless, I think that, listen, how about this? If anyone has any tips or tricks on how to let people yeah, know when they the smell comments. bad, how about you leave us a friendly comment? And, and or send us send us a note. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. <laughs> um, last one. This will be last one. This is always a good a good question. I'm calling a lift or not. You're engaging with someone first date, and first date. they're just you just find yourself constantly drifting away from the conversation. Just not engaged. Just that's a red flag. Just just sometimes in it, and then you just oh in it, and then you're gone. You calling a lift? Or are you gonna stay? I'm gonna I'm gonna stick that one out. Hmm. It's you know, I'm gonna I'm stick that one out. Okay. First date. I might I might cut it a little shorter, but I wouldn't. I don't think. I'm not gonna immediately like be like, oh, this conversation's terrible. Oh shit, like gotta go. That's funny. We had a, we had a friend tell us they were having a terrible conversation with a date, and they immediately we just had to end the date then oh, then and there. Yeah. That's harsh. I don't think I'd do that. No. I stick okay. it out. I stick it right. out. You're a kind Wonderful. person. Yeah, He's a yeah, kind yeah. person. No, I'm not. Listen, Max is very kind. There's a thumbtack in my water. What? <laughs> Let me see. I think you put Bro. the tacks in your water, in your cup. Is a she while still ago. drinking? It's fine. It's clean. It's just, I looked in. We have been leaving thumbtacks in here because of set design, and I realized it's still in there. Well, don't poke your lip. Okay. Don't swallow it. Thank you. That's why you need to have some clear cups. Okay. Clear cups. Clear cups only. So Don't as we were just on the... Thumbtacking. You're drinking water on a Saturday before noon. <laughs> How are you drinking water? It's thumbtacking. It's thumbtacking water. Okay. Great. Are you done? I'm done. Wonderful. You Thanks don't have so. one more? I mean, do you want one more? I feel like you want me to be like, I'll call a lift for show. I want to say that one time. You don't have to. Okay. You don't seem like the person to be calling li calling lifts to get out of there. You I'll seem stick like it out. you seem like you stick it out. I'll stick it out most times. Mm. Sometimes it's like, you know what, I had a good time, but No, this was this is a real Max situation. This is I Max, I'm reaching back to our story. Which one? Max called me a lift. He had to suit your ass on? Max <laughs> sent me home. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Max what sent me home. Lift? Max sent me home. He sent you in a lift or a lift pool. <laughs> Listen, it was a lift. It was a it was an X. It was an X. It was a it Max was a sent X. my ass home. Why were you sent home? First of all, <laughs> wait. I need to be, yep. I am. We're gonna do it. There was about a year or two ago. Okay. I went to Max's house real late at night. Is this okay. the same? Oh, real you're right. late at night. I I I I had to give it to Max's house so bad. I had my mom drop me off oh, at Max's yo. house. Yo. It was late. This is a true story. It was this late. is a true story. It was late. And I don't know. Me and my mom were out late together. And I was like, I'm going to somebody's I... house. And my mom was like, but it's late. And I was like, Mom, I'm going. Bruh. And Max opened the door and I went to Max's house. Probably fell asleep. I think we just fell asleep. Nothing happened. Mm -hmm. It was a crack of dawn. Max woke up real nice and early. He said, it's up Saturday early. morning, and I'm going to play no, basketball. It was Sunday. It was, it was Sunday. Sunday. It was Sunday. Okay, it was Sunday. It he was said, Sunday. I'm going to play basketball. Mm -hmm. He said, unfortunately, I can't I can't take you home. Can I, can I call you a lift? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Max said, can I call you a lift? And uh, that's what he did. Sent my ass right on home. And he went to go play basketball because ball is life. Listen, sometimes you got to send a bitch home. Okay. Send a bitch home. Okay, okay. Can I give my version of this Go account Go right now? ahead. Right. I'm trying to remember. For the people. What What were we doing before, like in the regular evening time? What, Where were we? We were at an event or was something. It, I saw you somewhere. Yeah, it was somewhere. I think it was at Red Bay Coffee. Might have been. Okay. I literally came to his house. I think I hit the J one time and I fell asleep. Bro, I just remember your mom dropping you off in my house, and it was like I remember we were like we was like oh yeah you, like we were at this like event, and then mm -hmm. I was like yeah you want to hang out afterwards I'm going home. She was like for sure for sure I'm gonna chill with my mom, and then I'll come over. Mm -hmm. But it was like nine at that time. At that time, mm -hmm. the time I got dropped off was around two. 
Two. It was late. It Jen, was two. Jen's mom. It was yeah. two. Where was, where, this by question, her mom. The question is, she where was, her where mom was, at my house where at was Jenna Sr. going? To our house that Bruh, we lived in together. I was so... <laughs> I, I was like, yo, Jenna's tight as fuck. Like, I'm down to hang out. But being dropped off at your mom at my house at two? You guys, yeah. Off of no kick it before? Listen. I was, I was like, man. Listen. And I was trying to stay awake. It, it was, was just, like two, and she came over. It was like two fifteen a.m. on a Saturday. I got hoop at eight. No, and I got hoop at eight because ball, ball is life. And so I don't even think we could kick it. Like I think we came over at well, two. You don't, so you don't call. You don't call them for yourself. You'll call them for someone else. That's what we He's a gracious that. man. Okay. Yeah, man. He's a kind man. That. He's a kind, I'll kind man. That. That's because Max is grown. He's a grown ass man. So, as a grown ass man, mm -hmm. that leads me into my next questions because I feel like there's a lot of misconceptions around like how black men take care of themselves and mental health and self care. So, can yeah. you talk to us about your mental health and your self care practices and what you do to, you know, give to the community? Part of that means you're you're taking care of you, right? And maybe for I don't take care of myself. Because I, I was talking to two guy friends recently, and they said that they. Um, I know we talked about anxiety as well, and they suffer from anxiety. And so, and they're in their early 20s. I know you're, you know, in your 30s now. And so, or 30, in your 30s I'm now. 30. And so, yeah, how has your self care also on building on that improved from your 20s? How, and how have you seen it benefit you as you've gotten older? Because mm -hmm. I know that some guys, my friends, is like, oh, you know, self care. I've been putting on face masks and shit. You're like, nigga, that ain't, that ain't the only way to self care. Mm -mm -mm. Well, I exfoliate it. No. Um, <laughs> man. Uh, so, like, I think that starts with, like, self-awareness, right? Like, if you're aware of yourself and, like, how you're feeling, then you can take care of yourself a little bit more effectively, I feel like. Right. So, mm, I try to check in with myself a little bit more in my older years. Mm -hmm. mm. How do you check in with yourself? Um, I have one of these. I journal a lot. Okay. I write a good amount to mm -hmm. myself. Um, but I think, yeah, it's crazy to be black, <laughs> to be labeled black as a black person in America, mm -hmm. bro, bro, that, that I feel it's like exhausting at times. I feel like being black in America is like walking through a blizzard mm -hmm. and you have varying degrees of equipment to deal with that blizzard. And you looking and you're seeing all the other people that got labeled black in the country. And some people have full parkas and ski masks and scarves and hats and gloves. And other people just out there in a t white tee. <laughs> extra, extra L. <laughs> white tee out and there. A triple blizzard. XL white tee in the blizzard. And you see it. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you do. And so I wanted to talk about to people about how that takes a toll on you like how seeing your own people suffering in the way that they do whether you acknowledge it or not seeing that daily like takes a toll I feel like being black in America being especially a black man and seeing men that are twice my age like eating out of garbage cans living on the street it almost feels like at any point there's like a trap door that you can mm -hmm. fall through mm -hmm. and it will never and you can just wind up like that. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I'm never too far from that. Even if shit's good, even if shit's just popping, even if I got money in the bank and mm -hmm. positive relationships and supportive family, I still feel like and at any made. point some shit could happen and you could fall through that trap door. Mm -hmm. um, and so I stay in community with people. I stay in community with people that make me feel good that make me laugh, especially. I think laughter is probably my biggest healing um, mechanism. Is an instant vacation. Instant vacation. I think Russell Simmons said it, but laughter is the only time when you're truly in the moment mm -hmm. is when you're laughing. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm trying to crack jokes every day. Mm -hmm. And even if nobody laughs, I'm making myself laugh every day. I'm checking my memes. My memes are making me happy. Meme game strong. Meme game strong. Um, and I dance a lot, so I'll put on my favorite music every day, mm. and I'll, I'll 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 you know do a little some community dancing, laughter, mm -hmm. integral parts of the black experience mm -hmm. internationally as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So I want to talk more about your experience working in the industry and also working with women in the industry. Mm -hmm. um, yes, yes. So I think that, you know, you've talked about your team, which has been men and which are great. But how have you worked with women? How have you been an ally for women? Um, and then, yeah, how is Wine and Bowties a platform for women to stand on as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think it's honestly something that we have to continue to be conscious of and doing more work to make that make sure that that representation is balanced. I think when we first started, we took a lot of pride in showcasing the works of women that you know we believed in and kind of making it an, uh, an even representation of, of their work on the website. Um, and then, yeah, you know, as time's gone on, uh, there's been different women that we've been involved with that have uh, added to what we're doing. But I think we need to still move with a little bit more intentionality around inserting women at every aspect mm -hmm. of the process. And so, I mean, we we uh, we relaunched our website in January of this year, mm -hmm. and you know we had a small editorial team. I think it was like four of us, like me, my roommate Will, and then another homie. And we're sitting there, and we're sitting at a round table like this, and we're going through everything, and we're working through the editorial calendar, and we're like, "Cool, this is going good." Mm -hmm. And I think it was like an hour, hour and a half in. I think we finished the meeting. And I was just thinking to myself, I'm like, you know, guys, this is this is a great meeting. I'm really happy with the direction we're going. We need some women at the table. Yeah. Mm. And everyone was like, yeah, yeah, man. Y'all was going to say the same thing, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> you know, they probably were. They probably did feel the same way. Mm -hmm. But I think just that level of intentionality that mm. we still have to work on. Yeah. Um, but to, with, to that point, um, Will's brought on... Ali, his girlfriend, Ali Madigan. She's okay. a great, uh, like, set designer, artist, creative artist. So Amazing. she has a, a, a role in fields, um, working with all the artists and doing a lot of the curation and design there. And so her involvement has been huge for us. Yeah. Um, she's been a part of the last two fields. And um, she's, yeah, she's a great set designer. Mm. And so just bringing her on has, has added so much to what we're doing. And so... To be honest with you guys, there's a there's a potential for us to do a lot more, sure. mm -hmm. um, but I hope that we can continue to move with a little bit more intentionality sure. as we go on. Well, I I will say that you know thinking about the people I've known that worked with you guys from the House of Malaika to Queen's Delight to Siri, you've touched a lot of my favorites, and so I really commend you for that is true. You've touched a lot of my favorites, and then you look at the the lineup for this year, exactly. and it's like you I think after Princess Nokia, you have like Mickey. Mm -hmm. who is, you know, not a traditional, not, he's, he's not trans. He said he's not trans, but he's been on a transitional journey. And mm -hmm. so I will say that it's been cool to look at these lineups and see people that I love from the Bay Area, but also people who are iconic internationally, mm -hmm. who have kind of a fluid gender, right? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you think of a lot of li other lineups, it, it, there's not something for everybody. You had Sid the Kid before, like you, I think you've done, you've made yeah. some waves. I think so too. I think so too. I might be discrediting this in a little bit. I think as far as utilizing the platform of wine and bow ties and fields, we've done a great job of showcasing yeah. um, female talent, female talent, different types of talent, different types of people, different types of ideas. Mm -hmm. um, I think where we really need to do more work is involving them on the back end. Yes. You know what I mean? And, and more of the creation of the work. Yes, absolutely. Uh, but you are you're right. Carrie, Carrie Fall was at... Uh, New Year's, Jungle Pussy was at New Year's. It was yes. the all woman lineup for New Year's. And we, I remember Will and I were really proud this of that. The Sid the Kid one? No, that was this past year. This past year. This past okay, year. so okay. we was, were in Johannesburg this past year. Okay, you lived But yeah, you the lived. year prior? Oh, was Sid. At uh, um, Jeffrey's. Jo Jeffrey. We were there. We were there. She did not think we were going to get into that party that evening. The thing that I love, right? So, yeah, we absolutely want women in the back end. We absolutely want women talent. And then there, I have this experience as well. And then also, you did. I love that in our conversation before you designed the experience with women in mind, as well. Oh, that's yeah, that's been true since the jump. And and so something we learned in the Women in Music Festival, right, is that there's really no party if there are no women there. Um, it's just facts, facts, facts that's, only. That's I think um, wasn't it? Namaste, Namaste says that. Namaste, Shadi. So shout out to her. Said that um, at a panel. And so, how do you go about? designing for women in mind in your experience design is there something that is there something that you think of specifically outside mm -hmm. of the lineup to engage women because we walked in and for 2000 and 
17 New Year's and just immediately felt super safe, super confident, super sexy, super like not imposed by any of the male men, men in the space. Um, so I'm wondering, how did you do that? Yeah. Well, you know, I think we're, you know, Will and I and our team is really passionate about experience design. Mm. Yeah. But I think, you know, even from the early stages, like walking into a space, I know I would always think about literally like I'd, I'd walk like two blocks away mm -hmm. and I'll walk up to the venue okay. and walk through the entire venue mm -hmm. with the, with my own perspective, but then I'll wear a woman's hat mm -hmm. and be like, how is, a, I'll try my best to figure out how a woman is experiencing. And this was before we really had women on the team to really like give us their own um, perspective. perspective. Yeah. But I would always try to look at it through their perspective. And so when I'm thinking about the pillars of an experience, it's like location. Yeah, safety it's, big. It's, uh, who's there, the people, mm -hmm. and then like, you know, the vibe, the music. Yeah. And so we just try to make those three things accommodating to women, obviously like safe space, a place that women would want to be at, mm -hmm. I think is something that we go for. And then also just trying to present, um, you know, music and sound that isn't um, derogatory or oppressive, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like you can definitely have the turn up, but you can always balance the turn up with something that's a little bit more accessible to, to women. and Our favorite dance floor was like, there's a 1970s dance floor that you guys had that year? Uh, At Jeffries. Oh, that was probably Fela Cucci, yeah. And she was killing it. Yeah. yeah. Never danced so hard in my life. Yeah. Yeah. We took a lot of pride in that though. You know, we looked at our statistics and there's a even split between men and women on our social media channels okay. and on our website. It's literally uh, 49 or 51 women, men to women mm -hmm. or something like wow. that and that's something we take a lot of pride in because originally it came from two dudes yeah trying to appeal two black men at that mm -hmm. uh, who oh will's not black no. we don't know will no i'm putting yeah. stuff yeah. stereotyped on his name yeah. will is what is he? Is he he's, he's not, i'm putting he's labels not. on this man and i don't even know who he will's is listening going me? <laughs> is it me that you speak of welcome will shout out to you shout out for, my man will uh, shout out will uh, he's a great being human. an ally he, as he's, well he's an ally uh okay. doesn't have to be having to be the same complexion as me no. okay Probably Sorry. himself as white. Okay. Um, <laughs> but, works uh, for me. Yeah, still it works. A great dude, great dude. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so lastly, I think. <laughs> is that the perception? What? That it's two black guys? Mm -hmm. I, I think we just know, I know you. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I just, I actually don't. Um, I, yeah. I'm not familiar with Will. Or the other one, the other male that Jesse. you mentioned. Jesse. Jesse. Jesse's in and out. Jesse, 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 big baller brand. So he'll. He'll be in New York he'll or South by, and, some over and here. he'll sprinkle. He'll fly in for the. Okay. He'll. He was there for the preview. Okay, so um, we'll, we'll have to go out to lunch. We'll have to take you guys out to lunch. Sure, sure. We'd have like That'd two dollar sandwiches, cheap. but we can go out for lunch. Well, bon we me, can make, Cam Wong. Hello. We can make um, grilled cheese at your casa. It's my new favorite thing. <laughs> at my house. Panini grill press, grilled cheese. I'll make you guys a smoothie, or Down some juice. For it. Let's do it. Down for it. So we're gonna play another game. Yes. This game is called Am I Trippin'? Um, and so I pulled some things that I had seen on social recently and in the news, and I, I was just for me, it's like, am I tripping? Or is and, this crazy? Or is it okay, is it actually like crazy? Like and that. so you're gonna tell me if I'm tripping. Okay, I like that. Or this if game. this is actually some some shit okay. brewing. Um so I am going to start with um a few weeks back, there was an announcement on the Brooklyn Museum. Um, you may or may not have heard it, but they said that they had two new curators that were going to curate their African arts collection. And there was a really big uproar on social media because who do you think the people were that were curating? What? Not black. They were not black. Not, what? Not, um, not. And so even not. recently, they've, they've called for kind of like a, a group that will essentially work on changing the Brooklyn Museum because they don't feel that the Brooklyn Museum is in is in connection with the community. Mm. Right. And so my question is, am I tripping? Like, are we tripping? Because, you know, we want that black representation of black face or, you know, is having accreditation and a degree and a topic good enough to qualify you for a position? Mm. Right. I would say that you are not tripping on that, okay. especially when you you peel the, the layers back and you look at the historical um relationship between between blacks and whites in this country mm -hmm. um but i think that's something that i'm really fighting for with with wine and bow ties and, and the work that we do is just getting that representation from us 
so often I, I do I do see that, you know, there needs to be a white person that kind of gets in the middle of people of color's expression and then needs to become the, the spokesperson or, or the um, to articulate yeah. or to articulate that mm. for the rest of the people, almost as if, you know, uh, I don't know, they would assume that the audience for the Brooklyn Museum would be the same audience that the curators would be mm. speaking to as opposed mm. to the audience of the people that are doing the actual work. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, it's a real thing. We 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 really struggling with that, and yeah. it, you know, uh, it's yeah, it goes back and forth for me because it's like there are so many people of, of multiple races that have a lot of knowledge and know a lot of shit about cultures and and things. But it's like really like sometimes I just feel like the people that are of that culture should be the ones that are representing it, championing it. Sure. Yeah, I want to give you one more opportunity to. Brag on yourself mm. so okay. that you feel complete. Well, you know, my name is Max Gibson, a.k.a. MG, a.k.a. Yeah. MG Diddy, a.k.a. That Fruity Cat, a.k.a. DJ Bumpy Knuckles, a.k.a. Ball is Life, a.k.a. The Employer um, on the hoop court. And, um, <laughs> man, you can find me at Dispo Max. I like to take photos. Okay. So I'm on I'm Dispo Max on the gram. Okay. Um, but a lot of our work is at Wine and Bowties. So Wine and Bowties. Is it Wine Ampersand and, or Wine and Bowties? Wine, A-N-D, Bowties. Awesome. Online, on the gram. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Fields is coming up. And so our, our large, big booty shaking annual festival, art, culture, music, film, community, is happening June 16th in Richmond Where? at the Craneway Pavilion. It's awesome. Um, in Richmond. Shout out to the so, Rich. So, yeah, that's Mickey Blanco, Princess Nokia, Baby Mother, Queen's Delight, All Black, Siri, Lonnie Hawk. No, what's his name? Lonnie Holly. Um, that's crazy. Lonnie Holly's performing. All Black is performing. Yeah. Princess Nokia is performing. Crazy. Yeah, they're going to be on stage. So um, that's coming June 16th. The preview party was this week. So it's field season now, guys. We're getting. We Get ready. your the fields on. This is the part where we should play the Drake song. Care for me, care for me. I'm going to care for me, there for me, there for me. Said you be there for me. There for me. Yeah. Um, so those are the main things, but you can keep up. You can keep up with, uh, with us at Wine and Bow Ties. That's where we have all of our updates about the festival. And the tickets are on sale now, so you can cop them. Cop uh, the feels 6tv Say it one more time. Feels 6 dot tv mm-hmm. for the tickets to fields okay for all fields one and bow ties info mm-hmm. one and bow ties.com awesome perfect and then any last anything else that you gotta say for the people yes to the people mm. it's a tone looking to the camera to the old people to the young people the words i have for you on this saturday is to shoot your shot what do i mean by that i mean take a chance put action behind that dream that you have obviously you guys have done that you had the idea first one of you had it and you communicated it to the other one you said hey let's do this okay yeah let's do this let's get the equipment let's pen it out but now you're here and now you're all rolling and so i've seen that in my own life the how empowering taking action behind an idea is and I see it happening. You guys manifesting the same thing as well. Um, And so I want to encourage everyone to do that. And also remind people that inspiration has no boundaries. And so you never know who you're inspiring with your work. And just because they don't say something to you doesn't mean they're not catching your vibe. And so um, all the more reason to just take action and continue on with your pursuits. That was beautiful. Well stated. Thank you. Gorgeous. This is another episode of It's a Look. It's a Look. With Jenna, it's Frida, and this week, our incredible, phenomenal, and dynamic and sexy guest, Let's go. Max Gibson. <laughs> and that's a wrap. That is a wrap. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that's so good. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. Yo.